Okay, thanks for tuning in, you guys. If you clicked on this video, it's probably because you recently bought an all-in-one cooler, whether it's a Kraken product, the Deepcool product, the Corsair product. This should be fairly similar along all different products. If you do have another product, like the Kraken M22, I have an install guide for that. And if you have one that's maybe Corsair uh, that I haven't done an install guide on, Put it down in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to pick that product up if I get enough requests and do an install guide on those. But we are gonna be covering the Kraken X53 today, and we're gonna be specifically covering install from start to finish. So I'm gonna break down the unboxing, talk about what comes with it, and then of course we're gonna dive in, talk about placement of those fans and the radiator, how we wanna set up the actual cooler head, and we might cover a little bit on performance, but I am doing a separate video solely based on performance versus the Castle 240EX. So if you wanna know performance values, please check out that in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into the unboxing, see what comes with this kit, and then we'll get into the install guide. So thanks for watching. Here we go. Okay. All right, so as you guys know, I chose this because I did a previous video on the Kraken M22, and I really wanted to continue to test out uh, the Kraken product. So this is their 240 millimeter liquid cooler with RGB. Um, you can see here, it tells you what it comes with. The Air P120, there's two of them. Pump motor speed, it looks like it's 2000 to 2800 uh, RPMs with a plus or minus of about 10% there. And then it gives you the compatible sockets. So pretty much everything here from Intel and pretty much everything here from AMD, even including the thread ripper, which is awesome. And then it looks like your AM4 and TR, TR4 brackets are not included. So uh, we're probably gonna be utilizing a previous bracket that I have for this particular build. The packaging is very similar to the Kraken M22 as well as the install guide. That's why I make these install guide videos because it just gives you a few pictures, um, but it doesn't really give you anything specific. Okay, moving on. As we see, the biggest piece is gonna be our radiator right here. Looks fairly slim, not too bulky, not too tall. The caps here are nice and slim, so it's gonna give me ample room to work with inside the case. So it looks like a pretty long cable here, or pretty long um, tubes here for your cooling. And of course they are, they do have that kind of braided fiber on the outside here to protect them and protect your other components. So one thing I notice right off the bat is, just right off the bat, I'm probably gonna say that Obviously, this is gonna cool better. It's got a bigger, cooler head. At least it feels bigger to me, so. And that might be because this is also meant for the thread ripper. It's a little dry, and it's only in a very small area. I actually wanna be able to hit the entire CPU with my thermal paste. So I am going to wipe all of this off before I install. I just wanna mention that. So far, it's looking good. We've got an eight pin, 10 pin down here for your connection. I believe uh, this is gonna be to monitor for the pump, the CPU cooling, uh, and probably a bit more. We'll check that out in the NZXT software. And then you have, and this kind of irritates me, you have a micro USB here, which is a pain in the ass, let's be honest do something a little more updated in ZXT. You know, it is what it is. All right, let's set this one aside. Hands down, I love the Kraken fans, the NZXT fans, much more than almost any other fan out there. I like this, it looks clean. Um, it's got nice seals on it, so it can seal up against the edges of your case. And you get two of these bad boys. So what it say, 2,800 RPMs on these guys, plus or minus about five to 10%. So um, pretty good, pretty good speed there. Today I'm doing this on Ryzen, Ryzen 3700X AM4 bracket. So this is probably for an Intel uh, motherboard. And this is probably to swap for either Intel, I'm assuming Intel, I don't know for sure. We'll figure this out in just a minute, but 
you get two brackets here that you can put over your head. One's for Intel, one is for AMD. So here you have your 10 pin, so you can use SATA power, uh, you can use some sort of motherboard power here, or just a three pin fan to power it like a normal pump. This gives you options, which is super nice. And then of course you have your micro USB to a USB 3.0 or 2.0 on your motherboard and it'll power all of your RGB or LED goodness. So bam. And then last but not least, we have all of your standoffs and screws here for AM4 and Intel are included. The one thing they don't have is thermal paste. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all this together and tell you what, we, what you need for AMD specifically and how to mount this to an AM4 bracket today. So let's dive in and do that. I think we've done a good enough job unboxing. You guys understand what comes in this guy. So let's get it on the computer. Now that we've got all our parts and pieces put together, the very first step you're gonna want to do, depending on the computer that you have now, is prep for installing this cooler. If you're building from scratch, what you'll want to do is take your motherboard and take the AM4 brackets off that motherboard. Take that off and keep the back plate. This back plate is crucial. Now, if you have another cooler on there that utilizes a different back plate, you're going to want to find this back plate, but remove that other cooler. So, for example, I have the Castle 240EX on mine. The first step I'm gonna do is remove this cooler and clean the CPU. If you already have a pre-built computer uh, or you're building a new computer, you wanna either ground yourself, make sure you pull the power out of that computer and make sure it's not plugged into anything. That includes USB devices, that includes power, displays, anything like that. You don't want any power coming back into the system while we're taking this apart or using it uh, to install the new cooler and then end up frying shorting out some circuitry. So in order to do that, you can ground yourself using a uh, makeup bracelet that's grounded, uh, but I ground myself by removing everything, turning off the power supply, pulling out all cables from the back. So there's absolutely nothing back here. I'm gonna hold this power button for 10 seconds. And very simply, I'm gonna grab the power supply back here. I don't need to reach in, but what that's gonna do is power supply is grounded. If you grab that power supply, it's gonna ground yourself. What you really wanna do is make sure that you're unplugging your wires before you start pulling. Uh, that's what I went ahead and did. And then of course, next step of the process, uh, when we go to reinstall, is gonna be to configure the new cooler onto this bracket. Okay, so these next few steps I'm gonna go through pretty quick because you can do it a ton of different ways and it highly depends on the case that you are using. Uh, it will highly depend on the way that you set it up depending on your case. So because I'm using the NZXT H510i and I have this mounting bracket that sits, this is the inside of the case and this is the front slash outside of the case. So I want my radiator to be on the outside of the fans and the fans on the inside pulling in air. Now you can put the radiator first and the fans on the outside of the radiator if you'd like, that's totally fine. The way they arrange for pulling in fresh air is you want the front of the fan, not the side with the plastic on the back, but the front to be facing out. So this is gonna pull air this way. I'm gonna put this fan essentially towards the back of the case so I can route it out and plug it into uh, a fan connection or my fan hub. So essentially, once I have this all wired in properly, this will go out the back and this will sit at the front. So that's what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna hook this onto the bracket. We're gonna clean up the thermal paste. We're gonna install that into the case. We're gonna put our AM4 bracket on, clean up the CPU and install this guy and fire it up. So it's gonna sit like this. I am going to need the longer screws within that screw packet. That's what they look like. If you wanna do it the other way, you have to use the smaller screws to install the radiator to the bracket or the outside of your case first, and then you use these longer screws on the other side to go through the fan. I kind of wanna arrange this so it's sitting where I want in my case. This sits nice and flush down here at the bottom, so it can be touching the bottom entirely, or you can slide this up using the holes you have here if you'd like. So loosen up the screws now that you have them in and slide it to where you like. This is all preference. I don't know that this will affect performance in any way. Make sure there's no rattle here so you can grab this and kind of flex it around and see if there's any rattle whatsoever. 
as long as there's no rattle, you're good to go. Now, last but not least, we're gonna clean this up. That's where the isopropyl alcohol comes in. And we'll move on to the next step. Getting this bracket here off is super easy. It's just a quarter turn and it snaps out of place. And then you wanna grab the AMD specific bracket, referring to the beginning of the video. Pop again to the left, pull the Intel one out and put this one in. It's a little more narrow, uh, which fits the AM4 pattern. And then if you're using Intel, you just use this one. So clean up your CPU. As you do that, make sure not to contact these pins down here or bend any. And this is where I'm gonna apply my thermal paste. I will mention that if you're using AMD, you wanna match up that little gold. There's a little gold triangle. Sometimes it's small, maybe it's a little dot. Uh, but you want to match that up with the corner here that's got an impression on it on the AM4 socket. We're pretty much ready to install the cooler. So no matter where you started, this part is the same for Ryzen. It is different for Intel and I'm not covering that today. But if you've made it this far in the video and you're installing for Ryzen, you want to grab the packet that says AM4 on it. These are going to be your standoff screws. So this cooler sits on your CPU close enough and tight enough that it creates good contact and that thermal barrier that you have is being spread out and has a good layer to keep the heat for uh, transferring between the two objects. You wanna grab those screws and you wanna take this end here with the round piece and the screw on the inside and that is going to end up screwing into here. We're at the point where we're gonna be installing this cooler into the chassis of the PC. Again, these cables are gonna go out the back so I can manage them properly. My hoses are at the top of my case and I'm mounting with the fans on the front. Since my cooler's in place, I can kind of guess at where I'm gonna put this and more than likely I'm gonna have it run just like that. So these hoses are out of the way and not hitting any other accessories. Before I do that, I wanna tell you guys, because I've done one of these Kraken installs before, I wanna mention that installing the two wires into the head of this unit is gonna be much easier if done outside of the case than inside the case. Now that I have these attached, this one single fan wire here is gonna kinda of stay separate. These two longer wires are gonna run down the outside back of my case. And same with this wire, the USB, it's gonna run the outside back of the case. And I'm gonna grab the screws, the thumb screws, they're big, and they have a Phillips head on the top. I'm gonna to grab those and I'm gonna just lightly put them on in place over the screws for now. Now that I have these screws in place, I'm going to tighten down from corner to corner. That way I'm getting an even pressure all the way down. If you're a drummer out there, it's the same way you uh, tighten or tune a drum head. So what we have here is we have a pump connection. Now this is power for your pump in order to obviously pump the liquid through. There's a lot of question and debate about this and where to put it if you do not have an all-in-one pump header. So the recommendation direct from NZXT on this product is to put it into your CPU fan. Do not deviate from that. Put it in either the all-in-one pump connection or the CPU fan. So I have an all-in-one pump connection, so that's what I'm gonna do. If you wanna connect your system to an existing Hue 2 RGB system, that's what this third wire is for. That is for your RGB pin connection to an existing RGB Hue 2 system. We're ready to rock. Uh, I'm not gonna show you all the wiring because it's a mess, but definitely manage your wiring by adding in some zip ties. I do wanna peel this plastic and mention one last thing. Their logo rotates, so it can go from full 360 degrees around, which means you can mount this however you want it, anywhere you want it to be, and it'll look really good. So let me give you a quick showdown here. 
power here for color for RGB and LED. This is gonna be my power for control, uh, my power for pump, and then I have my lines ran at a twist here. Along the right hand side, we have our fans in the left hand side, the radiator. So if you've made it to this point and you've cable managed properly in the back, you've connected all your wires and you feel confident you did everything correctly, just a nice way to test to make sure you at least plug things in properly without actually booting up. Just plug in your power supply, turn it on, and click the power button. You'll at least get some power going to the cooler head, your fans. If your fans are not moving, they're not installed properly. If your cooler head is not turning on, it's not installed properly. If your fans aren't spinning, you did something wrong. And let me tell you, if you hit that point, retrace your steps, play this video in reverse, basically, and figure out where you messed up, where you didn't plug something in, and it's as easy as that. Uh, you might have to start all the way at the beginning. That's fine. Just take everything out, fresh rebuild, start from the beginning of this video, and watch it over. But if you've done everything correctly, you're here. And I really would like to go over a few things, but I wanna mention I'm doing a full video on the performance values of this cooler. And this particular video is just an install guide. So if you wanna know more about the software and how it works and how you can manipulate this all in one cooler and how it stacks up to other 240 millimeter coolers, please check out that video. It's gonna be available within a week of this video. What I'd like to talk about is the install, how it went, if I thought it was difficult, if there was anything I liked about it. And we'll end at that. So the level of difficulty, this was actually easier to install than the Deepcool Castle 240EX. The Castle was, in my opinion, complicated in the wiring, and it required a little more research on my part, uh, let alone somebody else who's unfamiliar with installing all-in-one coolers, to actually wire it in. The look and the style is actually really nice. Um, I do like the bezel it has around the cooler itself. It's very clean looking. It's, uh, I don't know, modern. Honestly, out of a scale of 10, I'd say this is probably a five or six. Uh, the install time, if I wasn't making this video, would probably have been closer to about 25 minutes tear down and put together. That's probably something I really liked about it was it's a fairly quick install for anyone who's inexperienced and not filming a video at the same time. Based on this alone, knowing that Kraken and NZXT make a great product, I would recommend this highly for somebody looking for a 240 millimeter. But definitely check out that video if you wanna see how it stacks up against some other products out there like the Deep Cool Castle. So, I appreciate you guys. I hope this video helped massively. I know my Kraken M22 video did. I still get comments and a lot of messages to this day saying thank you. So I have a lot to come on here. I'll probably be doing some overclocking. Again, I'm gonna be doing uh, some comparisons and benchmarks. So quite a bit of content coming up. Thanks for watching. Put comments below. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.